Hello guys and welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. Today we're actually just going to do a quick room tour because I really don't have a video for you guys this week so I thought we would do um, just like a weekly review type of video. If you guys want to see that then stick around. My name is Mark Shrimp Tanks. Well my name is actually Mark Peggy but uh, my YouTube channel name is Mark Shrimp Tanks. If you want to see tons and tons of shrimp tanks like this with lots and lots of shrimp like this then please do subscribe and hit that bell notification to never miss another video, right? So guys, today, I thought we'd go around and we'd just check um, all the tanks, anything I've changed this week. Because guys, I do. I do change a lot of things in my shrimp tanks. Every single week, we have lots of breeding going on. We have lots of uh, new shrimp. And I think you guys will love to see it, right? So let's go at the start over here. Uh, the major changes, though, guys, is probably a few visual ones. And this is more for my live stream. You might be able to see a few of them like in the background and stuff um, and this is just to cut out light cut out, cut out light pollution, light flooding uh, when I'm streaming you can see here this is just um, what's this called, this is like a plastic black uh, corrugated plastic right, it's the stuff that you use on on what would you call it, on um, my god I'm lost for words greenhouses right so it is the black plastic I've actually spray painted it black I did that yesterday because I had to do it yesterday guys because very very soon here in Norway it will be too cold to do anything at all right so I've had to do this you can see the difference look with the black plastic without the black plastic right so you get a lot of light flooding light pollution if I don't have this in place right so a lot of this is temporary as well I'll actually do uh, something a little bit better with this, but let's go over here because I've actually done it very very well over here today <laughs> right, So on this side you'll see it actually looks very very good doesn't it? To black plastic over here it kind of sets the tank off doesn't it guys right and this is simply held on I've actually got it with the uh, just magnets that I would use for cleaning the inside of the tanks So obviously I'll get better magnets you can see it slipped down here a little bit but there you go Right, so if I want to get into this tank, I just simply take these magnets off and the whole thing moves. Right, so I'm going to do this with all my tanks, all my racks. And I think that will look superb. See like this here, but across here, all these shrimp tanks will look amazingly good right? because it takes your eye. Well, I'm saying it takes your eye. It makes your eye focus more on the tank than the surroundings. Right? So that's what I want to see. So that's one of the things I've done this week. Um few water changes uh, by the way guys if you didn't notice already I actually mark all my tanks every second week I do a water change right and I drip the water back in I don't think I've ever done a video on that I think I'll actually make a video for that right straight away and next so you guys can see right but as I said I do um, water changes on these tanks every second week and I try and spread it out so I'm not doing too many water changes on one tank at a time because you guys know I'm actually disabled, not a lot of people know this, but I am actually disabled. I have issues with my back where my back, uh, the discs slip, right? So I have to watch with how much pressure I put on things. Uh, just for a little heads up, things like moving wood outside for the fire in the house in the winter here can make my discs slip in my back. Right? Things like doing a water change, moving a water change bucket can make my discs slip in my back. Right? So, uh, when I'm doing stuff, guys, I absolutely have to tense up my core <coughs> of my body. You probably should do that anyway. But I do, I, I really tense up my core and then I move the thing right and it, it's all for me to try and stop my back from slipping. Lots and lots of shrimp to look at. Let's go. Let's start over here. We already did a room tour last week, but guys, things change really, really fast in a tank. Uh, from day to day actually as well right so open early tank looking amazingly good especially with this little light thing here I think I actually have to go a little bit further back when I'm filming now so you guys can actually see everything can we see any babas baby shrimp hello there little shrimp in my lovely aquarium open early aquarium looking good so the way see I actually did a few changes in this as well uh, reduce the lighting Reduce the flow of the filter because we want more green in here. I'm actually, guys, I'm only feeding Bacter AE or some type of bacterial food in here um, once a week. I'm saying bacterial, that's technically not true. I use um, things that are 
enzyme rich to produce biofilm. If that makes sense, right? So back to AE has some of these things in it here. We have amylase, protase, etc., etc. Um, I have quite a few things in my shrimp room, just offhand, just so I could show you, so you guys know what I'm talking about. Biozyme. Uh, the stuff I got from Qualdrop. Bioenzyme. And I also, guys, also use this stuff. You could probably buy this online at Amazon. Super enzymes. This is more meant for human consumption, but it's the same thing. It actually contains the same stuff as well, with almost very, very similar enzymes, right? So, you want your shrimp to have a very, very good digestive system. That's what these things are really meant for, but they also help promote biofilm growth. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I'm a doctor. No, I'm not. Right, so you can kind of see it on the inside of the glass here, if I go like this, very, very slowly, you might be able to see it. That's what I'm looking for in this type of tank, this type of algae growth. You see it? Because Sulawesi shrimp are very, very, um, I think they're, they're very heavily dependent on biofilm, more than what we will feed them uh, with pellets and stuff like that, right? So you, the actual glass is so covered here, it's a little bit hard for me to see through. But you can see it on the rocks, see how green the rocks are becoming? Lots of berry shrimp in here. Blue Dream Tank. Um, again, guys, I just want to thank Peter that gave me all this stuff for the lids. Peter's actually supplied me with a lot of stuff like uh, a shrimp, etc. And this is stuff that he actually got for his greenhouse. I think he got it extra. Keeps in the heat, makes that top little layer here uh, more humid, which is very, very beneficial for, let's have a look here, what do you think? Plants. Plants like humidity, right? So you will get better uh, growth from your floating plants if you have a lid on the tank. Look at that lovely string algae. Ooh. This is a Blue Dream Aquarium. Looking good, guys. We did a hard call a few weeks ago. I can see a few bird girls there. Uh, this tank I'm actually feeding every day. I don't normally feed all my tanks every single day, but this is one of the few ones I actually can feed every day. Green Jades, shrimp, and their lovely shrimp aquarium. Uh, these are Rosa apple snails. Aren't they beautiful, guys? Uh, these are my uh, Super Crystal Reds, Santa grade. I'm not actually sure what the highest grade is called, because the bottom one here that you can see is uh, it's almost like a ruby red extreme, but this is a crystal. It's not a Taiwan bee. And uh, you can probably see, maybe just it's buried as well. I'm expecting these super crystals in this beautiful shrimp aquarium to have their babies very soon. Do you like, guys, do you like it when I overpronounce my words? It's something I've had to learn to do on YouTube so the YouTubes can understand what I'm saying. Welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. Uh, Blue Dreams, Blue Dreams Blue Bolts even, and their lovely shrimp aquarium. Looking good, guys. These have had quite a few babies in here too. This tank is very, very new-ish. 20th of the 7th, this is when it was set up, so um, it was cycled. This one was cycled for four, just four weeks, actually. This one this one was cycled for two months. But you can see how new these tanks are still. This one's already got a lot of babies. This tank, uh, we will have babies in it very soon because there's two girls in here buried. Buried, buried mamas. So by the way guys, did I tell you I'm Mark Shrimp Tanks and you're watching Mark Shrimp Tanks right? If you have not subscribed yet, there's a little button down here that says sub. Smash it with your freaking foreheads. Ooh. Alright guys, um, I was a little bit unsure what to do with this tank but I think we're going to go back to what we did before. This is going to be a mixed bee tank. Mixed bee shrimp tank. I don't think I'm going to put any kind of tangerine tigers in here or any type of tiger because uh, they seem to take over the tank quite a bit. So guys, look, you see what I mean here? Looks nice. Blind your time. You see, this is what this is for. Um, over time I will actually do this much better. I'm actually going to do uh, box all this stuff in as well and try and get the light under this part here. But it's all for your experience and your pleasure. All for your viewing pleasure, I meant to say. Right, so this is going to be a mixed bee tank. Um, right now it has King Kongs in it. 
still a little bit small. Zero deaths. Uh, so, as I said, guys, what I'm going to do is I can see um, these were from George Cohn. Thank you very much, George Cohn. Thank you to all the awesome people that send me stuff, especially things like with shrimp and uh, like all this corrugated plastic sheeting, because this makes a huge difference in the shrimp room. A uh, big thank you to George for sending me all this stuff, all these shrimp, because uh, these t a lot of these tanks would be empty if it wasn't for people like Peter and George. So, big thank you, guys. Um, the very best of these King Kongs will be going into this panda tank here, right, because I think there's only like three or four pandas alive in this tank. And guys, this was just down to, um, not the shipper, when I bought shrimp, it's n it wasn't to do with the shipper, it is just circumstantial, right, that if you get one or two dead shrimp in a bag, there's nothing that the shipper can do, the, this, the actual breeder that sends the shrimp to you, there's nothing that they can do, right, if a shrimp dies in the bag, and the water becomes polluted and it goes off, right? And then you have other shrimp in that bag and uh, they become affected by it and then they get sicker. And you know what I'm saying? If, the, if something's dead in a bag, say, for a week, you can imagine the amount of ammonia that comes off, right? Ammonia burns things. You can imagine what it does to a shrimp's gill. So even though you get, say, ten lovely shrimp, three of them die, you're left with seven, right? And you think they're all going to live because you, you put them in this tank clean fresh water and stuff. It's not always the case, right? I find that the survival rate is, is always much, much lower in tanks where uh, you have a few dead shrimp in the bag when you get them in the first place. If there's no dead shrimp in the bag, you're normally laughing kind of thing, right? So just so you guys know, don't always blame the seller or the breeder because there's not a lot that can be done about it. Because it, honestly, guys, if you complain so much about things like this, good little shot here. You can hear Lucy in the background, if you complain so much about stuff like this. Um, I didn't ask for a refund or anything for the, the, the bag with the shrimp to die because, guys, it's very, very hard for me to get shrimp in Norway. Right, so why would I complain? Why would I cut off my source if I know as well that it's not the seller's fault? Think, use your napper. Napper, is that a Scottish word, use your napper? Use your brain when you're buying shrimp for your shrimp aquariums and you have shrimp in the tanks. If you're wondering what guys why I'm over pronouncing things uh, like crazy it's because I watched a video on YouTube recently and they were talking about the YouTube algorithm where it can even see if you're smiling <laughs> it can see if you're smiling the mood you're in uh, the content of your channel right so right now YouTube's looking at my video the algorithm and it's deciding frame by frame right it's deciding is this a, an aquarium if I say aquarium, it kind of backs it up as well, right? So that is the way YouTube works now. It's not, it's not the way it used to be where uh, you used to be able to fill your tags and your description with keywords and kind of fool YouTube into thinking your video was something else just to get more views. It doesn't work like that anymore, right? So your content has to be about the shrimp and aquariums. The thing that you're making it has to be about, right, in a nutshell. Let's get over here before I blather on a bit more crap. <gasps> Looking good. See, you're not seeing all the glare from the light here, right? So, two coats of spray paint. This was an acrylic based spray paint on this plastic sheeting. It's quite flexible as well. It's very easy to cut. Um, and you can see, you can't see any light at all through there. And it makes the tank look way, way better when there's no light pollution or light spillage. While we're here, let's have a look at these uh, fancy, I'm going to call them fancy red tigers instead of uh, crystal red. Fancy, crystal fancy tigers. <laughs> I keep on getting the names mixed up with these guys. Because none of them are wrong, right? I could call these uh, red crystal fancies or fancy crystal reds. But I think the proper name would be uh, red crystal red tigers or something like that. You get the gist? These guys are always super active. I love it when I come near. These guys are like the most active shrimp in my room. Be more active, right? So these guys, there, were, there was something like 10 shrimp when we got them. I'm actually seeing babies go across the bottom of the uh, substrate now as well. Not so many because we got one girl that was buried and I, I think maybe half of them survived. I always see them over here in this log. Is that one right there? Right at the end of my finger, the little white thing? It is. I always see them in about this log or all these uh, leaves or on these. Two filters on this side, there's one there, you see it? Just there, a wee teeny thing. 
just under about half a centimeter. So we have probably about five or six. The last time I took some of the filters out on here, um, it was on this side actually, there's another baby there. Uh, there was a couple of shrimp behind it, so I'm, I'm taking it that there's a couple of shrimp behind every filter here. These guys are gorgeous guys. Look at them. Look at that guy at the back. Oh my god. Right, so right now in this tank there's like maybe two buried females. So we've already had one batch and then we'll have another two sets of buried females coming, guys. And boy, do I love these shrimp. They're, they're one of my favourite ones to look at just because they're so gorgeous. So gorgeous. The white and the red stand out like mad on these, these shrimp. Look at them. Whoop, whoop. Aren't they beautiful? So this is what you want to see in your tank as well. You see how active these shrimp are? That's what you want to see. I haven't fed these tanks again, by the way, guys, because I think it's good if you see the tanks in the way they are naturally, sometimes. This is my mixed tank. Uh, mixed zebras, black and red. I actually have my own shrimp that I had in there. You know the ones that I bred for my own uh, galaxy type thing? I actually put them in there as well because I want to see if we can maybe get some red galaxies in this as well. Cherry shrimp tank, big tub of sawasser tank. The shipping is over for the year guys if you want to buy plants it's just as it's finished because it's very cold in here. You're not really going to see anything in here either. But guys this is what my room is like day to day. Mulberry plant from Dell Aquatics, Dell Marine Aquatics. Mulberry Let's have a look over here, this is my galaxy tank. Uh, because the numbers are so low in this galaxy tank guys, I've actually put in uh, blue steels, some female blue steels. I'm, I'm hoping that they're blue female steels because uh, this is how you get boa galaxy. When you have galaxies and you mix them with blue steels, you get the, you get the, blue, you get the galaxy with the blue in their head. Jesus Christ, I can't talk. Like this one here, you can see just has some blue. Uh, but most of these in here are uh, boys. Most of them are boys. Little little boys. And we have about three or four larger females. So I added some more females in here as well. Just to try and kick start this tank a little bit. Because this one has been one of my slowest tanks ever. This one here. But again guys, this one was... Um, when I redid all my tanks, this one was rested. I actually took the boas out of here. Put them in another tank. And we tidied this tank up a lot. We fixed the filtration. We did uh, bigger water changes, we added the stuff, we added the shrimp and uh, it's now looking the part. It's now looking more like a shrimp tank, like it should be, like a breeding paradise. Right? So these guys will come good pretty soon. Uh, one of the big females at the back there, you can just see her blue steel. This is in my blue boat tank. This is the mother of all those babies you see. You see she's a blue steel. Blue steel can have uh, mixed babies, blue bolts and blue steel, right? So, um, she actually has molted in here, but she isn't buried, right? So, the next time, within three or four weeks, she'll be buried again. Red King Kongs, and uh, it just so happens that we can't see a single one. There's a lot of girls in here. Most, the majority of the shrimp in here are girls. There's something like 10 girls. And uh, every single one is very right, so this tank is going to be really, really good. It just shows you though, guys, if I don't feed the tank, you literally see nothing. Asian style filter, red king of kongs. Beautiful, beautiful shrimp. Let's go down here. Uh, these are the German uh, pintos in here. I get the tank. I'm not big on the tank now, guys, unless... Unless I'm live streaming because uh, you guys want to see more. See what I mean with all the lids? Keep down the condensation. Uh, normally I have the this going like the strongest way possible across. You see it? This way, the lines. Across the shortest distance, this makes this plastic very, very strong. Some of it I haven't just because I run out of material. You see it? Very, very good. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> this is my panda tank. We're going to actually put some of the King Kongs in here like we talked about before. There you go, look, look, see them? Alright guys, let's have a little look at the last tank. Which is my calcio. Guys, by the way, please, please leave me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's type of video a little bit more than uh, 
the normal ones, the normal videos I make, are, because I see it in my analytics that you guys actually like to see my tanks more like this and stuff. The more the things I do, the more you like to see. Right, so let's have a look at probably one of my favourite shrimp in the room as well. These are the uh, Golden Dragons or Red Calcio, whatever name you want to call them. I just call them Calcio because I don't know any other name. But these guys are quite active today, so let's have a little look. They're very, very active swimming around. There's probably a girl that is uh, molted in here that I can't see. Right, so again, this tank is quite a simple setup. You see I have my floating plants here. I love floating, floating plants in the tank. Red calcio, where are you? Yeah, so these guys, uh, they tend to be a little bit light shy. I have noticed this. That's why the light isn't fully down the way because uh, they tend to hide under the rocks and the filters and stuff if the, if the light is too intense for them, which makes sense. It's mental, and I was just literally saying these guys are quite active today, and then it looks like there's nothing here. But we will see. Again, these are a new uh, species of shrimp in my room. And I'm doing the same with this tank as well, guys. Uh, we top up this water. This one actually needs topped up. I might top up to about a centimetre from the top. And, um, and then I do a water change every second week. Or every week. Every week or two. It doesn't it, As long as it's not like huge water changes, and as long as you... Uh, drip everything back into the tank, you have no issues at all. You dig look at this beautiful shrimp here. Looking good, it's an awesome, beautiful shrimp tank if you can get past that glare. Yeah, there's definitely a girl molted in here, so... This will be one of the first ones that I've seen in here. First buried females, if we can see her. Pro uh, we'll probably see her in a day or two. You see them all hiding up here? Alright. So guys, let me know in the comment section as well if you've enjoyed today's video. Because uh, I love making them for you. Right? If you keep on liking my videos and people keep on subscribing, I'll keep on making more. Love you all guys. Have an awesome weekend and I'll catch you in the next one. Happy shrimp keeping.